Hey friends, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another reading vlog. This is a reading vlog that I was pretty much working on throughout the entire month of December because December ended up being a really hard month for me, you know, because I was recovering from my wisdom tooth surgery this month. I do talk about it quite a bit in this vlog and I'm sorry if that's annoying in any way, but I was like really going through it this month. But in this reading vlog, I'm going to be reading a number of different things. Like the original idea for this reading vlog was going to be reading books that I've had on my TBR for like a while, like books that I meant to get to this year, but didn't get around to. And I definitely do that because I read Killers of a Certain Age and Our Wives Under the Sea. But then I also do get to some new releases that I've just been hearing great things about like a dash of salt and pepper and mad honey So I read these as well And then I also read probably my favorite manga that I've ever read so far. So yeah, there's quite a lot of ups and downs It's the usual chaos of my reading vlogs. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Hello. Good morning How's it going? I wanted to update you because I have started on killers of a certain age and this is one that I've been very excited to read. This one's kind of like a mystery thriller novel. And it's really cool because in this story, we're following these four women who are now in their 60s and they are retiring from being assassins. And it's really entertaining because, you know, they are taking this like paid vacation from the company that they used to work for. And it's really cool because this company that they used to work for was called The Museum or like they don't even refer to it by like the actual company, company name because they're trying to be like really discreet about it. So they call the company that they worked for the museum and that company is paying for a, you know, full paid vacation for them to have their like retirement. And now when they're on their vacation, they start to feel like they might be being targeted by one of their own people. And so it's really fascinating to me. I really like uh, the writing style so far. I will admit that I'm having trouble keeping track of like which woman is which because there's four of them and they all read kind of similarly to me, but, but it's giving very like Charlie angels vibes so far like that's what I'm getting from this except there's four instead of three and I also do like that um in between the chapters that take place in the present we do get these chapters that take place in like the 1970s and we kind of get to see like missions that they did do when they were younger and so I don't know I'm kind of having fun with it so far I mean right now I'm only 58 pages in so I've just barely uh started on this this morning but so far I'm really liking the vibes of it I think it's really fun um as of right now I am heading to to Target because I have to go and pick up a prescription and my Target is a good, you know, 25 minute drive. So like I figured I would just listen to this audiobook in the car while I'm going and take you with me. It's looking very like cloudy and rainy out today, which is just kind of nice. Like, I don't know. I've just been really in the mood for weather like this. I've been craving rain. from all of the activities of this morning. I did end up going to Starbucks and I got a chestnut Pray, is it praline or praline? I don't know. This one is um, one of my favorite holiday drinks from Starbucks and I haven't had it yet this year. So like, <laughs> oh my God. Yep, it's just as good as I remember it being. I also ended up getting one of their um, pumpkin muffins because I can't resist getting a bakery item these days like every time that i go to starbucks i'm like well i need the bakery item too and while i was at target i was just picking up a prescription and then i decided to pick up a few things like my lips have been so freaking chapped lately and they've been hurting so bad especially because of all the recent you know like i just had wisdom tooth surgery and so my my whole mouth area has just been in a lot of pain lately and so i just found this stuff that's supposed to be like good for your lips like he like this is a lip repair and then this one is like you know the birds bees highly trusted um lip balm and so i'm very excited to use these and then i also went by my library because my hold on blood on the tracks volume four just came in so i'm very excited to read this but I did want to update because I was able to get all the way up to page 200 of Killers of a Certain Age and I'm still 
really enjoying this one. You know, I've seen some of my friends, like, I guess some of the issue that people have with this book is the fact that they said the 60 year olds are written in a way that makes them seem a lot, a lot more elderly than 60 year olds actually are in real life. And to be honest, I don't really find that to be the case for me with this book. I mean, I want to make one thing clear and that is that 60 is not old. Okay, like 60 is not old. 60 is so young. Both of my parents are in their mid 60s and like you would never know, you know, like they're so active, they're so healthy. And I feel like most of the 60 year olds that I know that are like my parents' friends and like people in their lives, it's like 60 is really not old. Like 60 is so young. But I don't really think that these characters are being written in a way that's making them seem old because I mean, they're just talking about, you know, regular things like they have a lot of back pain and they're quite a bit more forgetful than they used to be for sure. But I think that's totally expected for someone in their 60s. I mean, heck, it's expected for someone like me who's 27. Like, yeah, I deal with a lot of back pain and I forget a lot of shit. I don't think that that's totally wild to think like, yeah, they're probably a little bit more forgetful than they were than when they were in their 40s, you know? Yeah, I mean, at this moment in time, I'm 58% of the way through, so I'm just a little bit more than halfway. I think I might just lay in bed the rest of this afternoon right now and try to finish it because I am really enjoying it. It's a very quick read. I also don't know why it took me this long to realize that there are actually multiple narrators on the audiobook. I think there's two different narrators. They do kind of sound similar, and so that's why I think I didn't notice sit like right away. <laughs> much later in the night. It is just after 10 o'clock, but I wanted to update you because I have finished Killers of a Certain Age. And tonight was pretty awesome, you know. Um, I ended up going out to dinner with Rachel and her boyfriend. We went to this like local cafe spot and I decided to risk it all for some chicken tenders and some fries because, you know, I've barely been able to eat anything, you know, ever since my wisdom tooth surgery still. And I'm technically supposed to be on a soft foods diet for the next, you know, two to three weeks potentially. But I decided to get the chicken tenders and the french fries because most of them were soft enough that I could kind of break it into like little pieces and eat it. And oh my gosh, it was like the best meal I've had in a long time. So it was fantastic. And then we got frozen yogurt afterwards, which was really good. And then I was able to just like sit on the couch and finish reading my book. Like me and my sister had kind of a cute little reading moment because she was finishing up Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. And then I was finishing this and it was just so awesome. And this book, I don't know how I feel about this one. I feel like this is going to be a three star for me, which is kind of a bummer. This story didn't particularly keep me interested. Like I thought the beginning was really good. I like the idea of this book and I like the concept of it, but to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of just like reading about assassins in general. Like that's not a book topic in thrillers that I read very often anyways. And so I feel like this might be a situation where like it's not necessarily the book, it's more just like me and my personal taste and what I look for in thrillers. But at the same time, like I recognize that this is like a really fun, mostly kind of like light hearted book. Like I just had a really great time reading it still. And there were a few moments in this book that actually like kind of cracked me up just because of the way that these women would talk to each other. And I don't know if it's because, you know, these women are older or like in their 60s, but some of the phrases they would say would just like crack me up. Like this one line where she's just like, Jesus, what did you have for breakfast? A bowl of honey bunches of bitch. <laughs> I'm definitely using that line, a bowl of honey bunches of bitch. Besides that, like, I don't know. I feel like with this one, I enjoyed the characters, but I just feel like none of them 
them really had that much depth to them and I saw some of my friends um I read a couple of Goodreads reviews because I was struggling to like verbalize what about this book I just didn't really connect with and I did see a lot of friends you know mentioning the fact that you know this book was super entertaining it just kind of lacked that extra depth that you're looking for in the characters and the plot and that's something that I would definitely agree with I felt like a lot of the things in this book were very like surface level for me and I just wanted it to be a little bit deeper at times but I still had a fun time reading it so that's why I'm giving this one three stars. It's not necessarily something I would go around recommending though unless you're looking for something specifically kind of like this. So I'm thinking the next thing that I would like to read for this vlog is probably going to be Our Wives Under the Sea. This is one that I'm just so curious about. Hello, good morning. It is the next morning and so far I've had kind of a lazy morning. I just went to Starbucks with my sister and now I think I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning around the apartment because I've been meaning to clean my bathroom just to do like a quick sweep sweep of the downstairs floor kind of clean the bathroom area and just get stuff like that done today so i think while i'm doing that i'm going to start on the audio for our wives under the sea going. It's been a little bit over 24 hours since I last updated you because I have started on Our Wives Under the Sea. I've actually gotten quite a bit of the way through it. I'm 164 pages in and this book is kind of short actually. It's only about like 220-ish pages so I only have a little bit left and this book has been such a joy to read so far. Like this book is written so beautifully. I actually, you know, I was cleaning up uh, the apartment the other day and I completely reorganized my room. Like I moved my bookshelves around from the office to my room and like I just completely rearranged my room. And so while I was, uh, you know, doing all of that, I was listening to the audiobook and I was able to listen to like almost 40% of the way through the audiobook. And then last night I just decided to completely start over from the beginning because I wanted the chance to go through and like annotate this copy just because I found the writing to be so beautiful that I really wanted the opportunity to like read along with it with the help of the audiobook so last night I actually started it over from the beginning again and I've just been and I just listened to like 70% of the audiobook last night in one go and I'm really loving this. This is a, from what I understand from Goodreads, it is being marketed as a horror book, even though I don't necessarily know if I would consider this to be horror, but it definitely has that like horror vibe to it. You know, it has that horror feeling, but we're following these two women who are both uh, married to each other. And one of them went on this like undersea expedition thing on this like submarine or something like that. There was something that happened on this submarine that was unexpected where they like dropped down to like way lower in the ocean than they expected to, I think is what happened. It's still kind of unclear to me exactly like what happened to her, but ever since she's returned home, uh, she's just kind of acting different than she used to be. And it's just kind of this sad story about how she doesn't really recognize who her wife is anymore. And I feel like this might all be some kind of like metaphor. I feel like this entire book could be a metaphor for somebody who's like falling out of love with their partner or something like that, you know? And I think it's just so beautiful. It's so stunning. Like some of the writing in this that I underlined, um, there's just like these random quotes that I find to be so beautiful. Like people grow old when there's too much sky. They lose the sense of land around them, think themselves into floating away. Like, is that not like, whoa, that makes you stop and think what? I also love too how she says, the problem with this is that loving is something we all do alone and through different sets of eyes. And how she's saying it's impossible to like tell someone why you love someone. And she said, okay, so you're saying he likes long walks. You're saying she's a Capricorn, skip to the end. It's easy to understand why someone might love a person, but far more difficult to push yourself down into that understanding. Thank you. 
this? Hello, hello. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon now and earlier um, this morning while I was finishing my breakfast, I finished reading Our Wives Under the Sea and this book was really something special. I feel like this book is one of those books that is just so beautifully written and will make you feel so much, but I feel like this is a book that's going to struggle to find an audience, if that makes sense, because I feel like this might not be exactly what you're expecting it to be, especially if you go into this thinking that it might be horror, then you might be a little bit disappointed because while there are definitely some horror elements for sure, especially towards the end, I feel like the horror really ramped up for me, but at the same time, I feel like this is not something I would go around recommending if you're looking for something that's in the horror genre, you know, because it's not exactly, it just doesn't feel like it belongs in the horror genre for me. I did see too on the back that it said for fans of The Shape of Water and I actually really would agree with that comparison. I feel like this book would be a good recommendation if you're a fan of the movie The Shape of Water. I just feel like this book had so many beautiful quotes about, you know, relationships and about grief and how people can change over time and become somebody that we don't recognize anymore. And there's also just so many beautiful quotes in this book about the ocean and about the sea and just like, I don't know, the writing in this book was just absolutely stunning, like so beautiful. I tabbed so much, like I don't know if you can see all these freaking dog ears I made in this book because I was just so impressed with the writing in this. Just another example of one of the quotes that I really loved. This is a little bit further into the book, but it's not spoilery in any way. She says, I used to think it was vital to know things, to feel safe in the learning and recounting of facts. I used to think that it was possible to know enough to escape from the panic of not knowing, but I realize now that you can never learn enough to protect yourself, not really. Just the writing in this book is uh, very thoughtful. It's very sad. I feel like this book just has this really sad like undertone to it but I just really really loved it and as you could see um <laughs> the ending of this book did make me a little bit emotional it was just so well written at the end and it was so heartbreaking for me to read that final chapter so I can definitely see why this one is getting a lot of praise and a lot of hype from some of my some of my friends who read it I do see on Goodreads it's getting a lot of mixed reviews and that's kind of what I'm afraid of is because I think people are probably going into this with the wrong expectations but I think if you're just looking for a story that's you know really centered on this relationship between these two women and kind of the grief that comes with when a relationship feels like it's starting to fall apart. Uh, I just thought this was really powerful and really beautiful. So I don't know, I'm kind of torn over whether I want to give it like four stars or 4.5 stars. Like I need to think about it more. And then I also started, um, just while I was getting some things done this afternoon, I was able to start on Mad Honey. Um, this was recently sent to me off my Amazon wish list from Abby. So like, thank you so much to Abby for sending this my way. Um, this is one that I saw, you know, after I got nominated at the Goodreads Choice Awards, I got so many people commenting saying that they thought that this would be something I could really enjoy. And I I was kind of nervous about reading another book from this author because I did read Wish You Were Here last year or the year before when that one came out and I wasn't really a fan of that one so I am a little bit nervous to be reading this one but this one's really interesting so far because we're following this woman named Olivia and she's a beekeeper which I know literally next to nothing about beekeeping and like what all of that takes so I think the job itself is kind of interesting to read about but she has this really close relationship with her son named Asher and then in this story um almost like right off the the bat we find out that Asher's girlfriend Lily dies and that the police are suspicious of Asher and we kind of get to follow from the mother's perspective like what's happening as they start to suspect her son and arrest her son and she has to deal with all of the aftermath of that. But it's also really interesting because we not only get Olivia's point of view, but we also do get Lily's point of view, like the actual girlfriend. I kind of feel like this is a story that it feels like it's on the verge of contemporary, but then also kind of like mystery thriller-ish. Like it's just right on the verge of being both of those things. And I really like the way that it's written so far. As of right now, I'm 96 pages into it. I've honestly feel like I've barely made a dent because this audiobook is so goddamn long. It's like 15 hours long. And I mean, this book is like, like about 450 pages so it is quite a bit of a lengthier story but I'm hoping to read some more of it this afternoon. It's looking super like gloomy and just like depressing outside and like it might rain and honestly like I'm so tempted to just go out and get coffee right now because we don't have any coffee here at the apartment like everything expired. Beaut. Hello, 
hello, how's it going? It's actually the next day. It's about 11 a.m. the next day, but I did want to update because I have still been listening to Mad Honey. Um, yesterday after I went out and I got some coffee and I went to like my local bakery I ended up just swinging by my parents house because my dad let me know that he had made me some enchilada soup And like lately I've been loving soup like I've never really been a soup person But I don't know if it was ever you know ever since my wisdom tooth surgery I haven't really been able to eat a lot of like solid foods anyways So I've been trying so many different soups that I've never tried before and I've just been getting really into soup And so my dad made this enchilada soup and it was so fucking good. Like, I don't think he's ever made it before, but it was freaking fire. And anyway, so I went over to my parents' house to get the soup. And then I also just ended up hanging out with my parents for like an hour and a half before I came home. But yeah, I've still been chugging away at Mad Honey. I'm about 45% of the way through the audiobook right now, which puts me at about just a little bit over 200 pages in. I just reached a point in the book where things kind of took a turn or at least like something happened right now that was kind of like unexpected and now I feel like this book is going to get even darker and harder to read than it already is you know because the whole thing with this book is how you know this woman's son is being accused of possibly murdering his girlfriend and so there's already kind of like heavy subject matter happening in this book you know and it's already kind of hard to read because there's lots of talk about you know like suicide and like self-harm and you know depression and just like these really hard things like this book is definitely a lot more heavy than I was expecting it to be and there's also like right now in the book we're reaching a point where it's a lot a lot a lot of court scenes it's just like people getting put on the stand and like questioning them I don't know this isn't my favorite kind of story to read because I find books like this like I, I do like the unique perspective of like following the mother of a son who's being accused of murdering his girlfriend and how that is such a unique perspective to have with the situation like this but at the same time like I don't know I'm not necessarily the kind of person who loves to read books where like the main focus is the courtroom scenes and like the back and forth of the court like I definitely find it interesting but it's just not the most enjoyable form of storytelling for me like I think I like a little bit more of the personal aspects of these things instead of like what's actually happening in the court like it just kind of bores me a little bit but yeah I think I'm definitely going to um continue this one on audio today I think I'm gonna try to finish it because I do have like over you know 50% of this audiobook remaining but I do have a little bit more time this afternoon to just keep listening to it while I'm doing other things for example I am just updating my journal for like the end of the year I love to make these like stats pages in my journal at the end of the year and I haven't done that yet and I'm like holy shit because I've read over 220 books this year like I've read so many this morning while I'm listening to this on audio I'm just gonna go through my goodreads and like go through every single book and then make a tally for like all of the different things that I like to track so I figured this might take me a while you know like I'm expecting this maybe to take an hour maybe two like I don't know how long this is gonna take so um, I figured I would just listen to this on audio while I'm doing all that I also tried this morning um, I've always wanted to try these uh Chobani yogurt drinks like this one's like a drink and um, I decided to try this because you know once again can't have solid food right now and this is actually so good like I wasn't I wasn't sure what I would expect with this this one's the strawberry banana um, Greek yogurt flavor but I don't know I actually really like it I feel like drinks that are yogurt-ish um, are always very like hit or miss for me because I'm a big texture person, but I actually do really like this one. I think it's very tasty. So yeah, anyways, jumping back in to Mad Honey now. <laughs> been a couple of days since I last updated this vlog even though I'm pretty sure I was wearing the same sweater in the last update which is a little embarrassing for me but honestly I never take this off but I did want to update because I have been reading some things and I just haven't been updating you about it because I did end up finishing Mad Honey and I feel like I needed to take some time to think about how I feel about this book because this book ended up being about a subject that I wasn't really anticipating this story to be about and so I felt like I needed to take some time you know really think about what 
what I feel about it and then also read some reviews of how other people are feeling about it. And you know, I know there's a discussion to be had about authors writing about experiences that they haven't had, especially when it comes to certain identities that people identify with. I'm trying to be so vague because I'm not trying to spoil you because I feel like something in this story doesn't get revealed until over like 200 pages in and then I was like, oh, like I didn't think it was going in that direction. But I also think it's kind of annoying to me how, you know, when I was reading like negative reviews of this book, people will just be, you know, writing that they don't want to be preached to about these certain t subjects and that they don't want to read a book about this subject when they're not anticipating that and all that kind of stuff. And I think that honestly, that's kind of bullshit <laughs> because I do think the topic being discussed in this book is so important and so relevant. I guess my thing with this book is that I don't know if these authors in particular should be the ones telling this story, but it's also like, I don't know, I read the author's note at the end of this book about why these authors felt compelled to tell this story and I honestly nearly cried listening to the author's note and I feel like overall I'm gonna give this book four stars. I know I'm being super vague just trying to not to you know spoil you about what happens in this book but if you would like to know more about what this story is about and the different trigger warnings that could be um you know brought up in this book I would definitely check out some Goodreads reviews and just see because people are definitely talking about it. I just don't want to spoil you because I feel like knowing what this book gets into a little bit later on is kind of a spoiler because it's not addressed at the beginning. So yeah this one ended up being a four star for me. It's not a new favorite but it's definitely a story that I can appreciate and I think is really beautiful and really well done. And then I also so um, just the other night, I read A Dash of Salt and Pepper. This is a book, this is a romance book that I've been pretty intrigued by. I read this in like two sittings. I just listened to the audiobook. And in this story, we're following this protagonist named Xavier, and he's going to be moving back to this small town in Maine that only has about like 9,000 people living there, which, okay, love the small town vibes. And this is a romance novel between him and this guy who runs this restaurant. He's a chef, and he's going to be working in the restaurant with him. And there's cute, you know, restaurant vibes. They all also do have some pretty cute banter at the beginning like they don't really like each other at the beginning but I feel like this book oh my gosh I have such mixed feelings about this because I feel like some of their banter was so cute and then some of it was so like cringy and just felt so forced and I kind of hate when the authors like try to make the characters not like each other but in a way that feels like unnatural or almost like childish I also feel like this book suffered from just that one point of view you know I feel like I did not want to be in Xavier's head for this entire book I feel like this book could have really benefited from having a dual point of view because I just really wanted Logan's perspective at times, you know, like I just really wanted to know what was going on in his head. I feel like the writing style for me just didn't really work in this book because I found sometimes the protagonist, like being in his thoughts, he would be so like chipper at times in a way that it almost kind of felt like young adult. In a way, like the writing style just felt similar to how some young adult books read where the protagonist is just kind of annoying sometimes. But at the same time, you know, I had fun reading this. I liked the restaurant scenes. It felt very like cute and cozy most of the time and like I said sometimes their banter was so fucking cute I like smiled or laughed but then sometimes it felt really cringy so overall this was like a three star read for me I don't have bad things to say about it for the most part it was just fine I also have been reading a lot of manga over these last few days it has been snowing like a bitch outside oh my gosh like last night especially we got heavy snow we got like a winter weather warning and now there's like a solid foot of snow outside of our apartment and the drift is insane like the drift is like up to my waist like waist high deep snow so like i'm not going anywhere you know like i'm not leaving this apartment i'm getting ready to do the book troop superlatives live show in about 30 minutes i just poured myself an iced coffee even though it's fucking freezing outside like why am i like this i don't know sorry tank just opened the door that was really creepy <laughs> but i wanted to update because i am currently reading orange and this is a manga that i have been really interested in reading for a long time this is actually a collection of three volumes and then there's also a second collection and all i really knew about this before starting it like i had just heard that like oh if you want a really good you know teen high school romance kind of manga then this was like highly recommended recommended and highly reviewed and rated and I knew literally nothing before jumping into this story and I didn't even read on the back that it says that this is a sci-fi romance. The sci-fi elements of this book is something that completely took me off guard and I was not expecting and I read the first two volumes of this uh, yesterday wh while I was on Patreon reading sprints and I am so fucking obsessed with this. Like I'm actually like kicking myself right now because 
I have already filmed, you know, like my, my best books of 2022. And in, in the beginning of that video, I do talk about some manga that I've been enjoying this year. And now I'm so upset that I won't be able to talk about this book because this might be my favorite manga ever. Maybe. <laughs> I know that's like dramatic to say, but I love sci-fi romance. I love, you know, anything that involves time travel or some kind of, you know, discussion of an alternate reality that could exist. Oh my god, I'm literally so into this. And in this story, we're following this girl who's in 11th grade. And it's so interesting because the story starts with she gets a letter from herself 10 years in the future telling her like, oh, this is what's going to happen on this day and yada, yada, yada. And it's really interesting because she says like, okay, so there's going to be this boy that transfers from Tokyo and you're going to get really close to him. And then like all of those things happen. And it's like, it's interesting because herself from the future, when she's like 26 years old, she's writing to her past self in the hopes that she will correct some of the regrets that she has. And so it's absolutely fascinating, you know, because this character is like reading about what she expects to happen that day and how she can like improve the situations. And there's also just like, oh my god, there's the cutest romance like ever happening in this book. I just like, I ship it so fucking hard. And then also there's even a little bit of like a love triangle situation happening throughout the story as well, which usually like love triangles can be very hit or miss for me. But this one in particular, I'm like screeching because they're both actually so cute and like I'm actually kind of torn on like how I feel and like which guy I would like for her to end up with like it's just so fucking cute and so I still do have one more volume in this collection to read and then you bet your ass I'm gonna be immediately wanting to read the next volume I feel like I need to save the next collection though for 2023 <laughs> that way at least I can be like oh orange you know like mention it in my favorites of next year because I already know this is gonna be like my favorite thing ever like I'm, I'm afraid that this is going to become my whole personality and like I'm never going to shut up about this. I also just really love uh you know the art style in this like look at how cute they are. I love how like expressive he draws their eyes and like oh my god they're just they're adorable. Tanky all cuddled up in his cute little pink blanket bed. It's been so fucking cold out like he is not about it like I mean he likes the snow but he gets so fucking cold and he's literally just been laying around like sleeping all day. Hi, I'm back in bed. I'm starting on the last volume in this collection, volume three right now. It's only about uh, eight o'clock at night. You know, I just watched the first episode of season two of Alice in Borderland because that just went up on Netflix today. And so far it's very interesting. I am very intrigued. And I'm so glad that I'm buddy reading this um, manga with my friend Mikay because like I'm just sending him videos freaking out because he finally, he just caught up to where I'm at. Where I'm at. We've been like messaging back and forth and he's been sending me like pictures of which parts that he's at and fangirling with me. And I love that my friend Mikay is like just as invested in this love triangle that is happening in this book. I feel like it's so rare um, when I ship the protagonist with both of the like love interests. Like, oh my god, they're both so good and so perfect for her. And they're both very similar in a lot of ways too. And I'm just obsessed. So I'm going to continue with volume three now. I'm trying to finish this because my heart, oh my god, I love it. Um, I just got my Almond Joy. So I'm just sitting in bed like grandma, eating my Almond Joy, reading my manga. And you know, <laughs> oh my god, this manga is so cute. It's got me like kicking my feet and shit. You know, oh my god, I can't. I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what this third volume holds. I feel like the end of volume two, there was kind of like a plot twist, you know, like things definitely like, whoa, changed. Look at them. Just look at them. <laughs> I love this. What am I supposed to do now? We got more snow last night. The drift is not as high as it was last time but i mean there's still a pretty good amount of snow right here <laughs> Hi, hello. It's the next morning, as you might be able to tell, <laughs> and we got so much snow overnight once again. It's literally the day before Christmas Eve today, and so it feels kind of, you know, nice, I guess, that it's snowing. But anyways, I did want to update that last night. I did finish reading the last little bit of Orange, and oh my god, I am obsessed. This might be my favorite manga that I've read this year. Like, this might be my new favorite manga. And so I think for those reasons, um, I'm gonna hold off on reading, because like, there is a second collection of volumes and I think I'm gonna hold off on reading that at least until January so that if anything to make up for it I can just include orange as a whole in my favorite mangas of next year like I know that's so ridiculous but like ugh. 
I just filmed it too, like gosh dang it. But yeah, this was a complete success. I loved this so much. I love these characters so fucking much. My heart was hurting. This was the first time I ever felt like I would actually cry over a manga. Like that hasn't really happened for me yet. And so this was just a totally wonderful experience. And I'm just so glad that I even got into manga at all this year and that I discovered a new favorite with this one because I'm so excited about it. I wanna push everyone to read this because it's like one of my favorite, like I just love sci-fi romance so fucking much. And this was definitely my favorite thing that I read for this reading vlog. So and that's going to be a wrap on this reading vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I feel like this reading vlog had a lot of ups and downs, but for the most part, I did enjoy most of the stuff that I was reading. So I think that that's a plus. And yeah, wow, can you believe that this is already my last reading vlog of 2022? Like, wow, this year just flew by. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm looking forward to all of the reading content that I've planned in 2023. I'm so excited for the first few reading vlogs that I've planned for January. Ooh, I can't wait. So thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye.